Peter, uh, thank you for the invitation. I will try to do my best with my English because I'm not English speaking naturally. So don't do not hesitate to question or you know to to speak if you don't understand what I mean. So uh, what I'm going to present to you tonight it's uh, some work that I did before. I'm working as an artist for about 15 years and uh, in different fields. I basically um, started in the fields of photography. When I was 18 years old, I, st I really wanted to be a photograph, to explore images, different potentials of uh, images. So I did a lot of projects uh, with uh, professional photographs in fashion, in installation, and different kind of commissions. But then I was more interested into the art, into developing personal works and projects and ideas. So I then continued my studies. I decided to apply to uh, a school that is really special. It's called Le Frenois. Uh, this is Le Frenois in Tourcoing, in the north of the country, uh, which is a great place for different kind of artists. Artists that do films, installations, sound projects, uh, new media projects, but also all kind of fields, even painting. So that's, this is an amazing place for studying and creating projects because also they are producing works. So I did my first art exhibitions in Le Frenois. And then, thanks to Le Frenois, I was also invited to produce different kind of exhibitions uh, later. So I just wanted to introduce myself a little by uh, showing you some influences that I had when I really started. Uh, so I was about maybe at the Grand Palais, and he produced lots of video installations uh, in relation with the body. Here on the left, Christian Boltanski. On the right, this is Claude Lévesque. Claude Lévesque is very typical for me because I, I met him when I started to work. It was maybe 10 years ago, so and I really trust in him, and he also helped me a lot to be to continue my work and to criticize my work. So I'm really interested in his work. So um, those are two other artists who works with photography. So on the left, this is Dwayne Michaels. He's from the U.S. and he produced lots of images, uh, also with bodies creating stories fictions and also really mystical images and sometimes really funny as well uh, so it's really interesting on the right this is uh, Gab Felix Gonzalez Torres who's producing different uh, installations in connection with its memory its personal story on the left this is uh, the first video I've seen in my life the first art video, which is from uh, Rybczynski. He's from Poland, and he creates very crazy videos, combining different layers of people meeting on the same image. So this is a room on the left where a thousand people enter and go out of the room at the same time, but they they don't they didn't meet in reality. It was just a, a production, a post production. Uh, so this is really interesting. On the right, this is an American photographer, Sandy Skogland. Here are, th are the main topics I'm interested in for, I mean, a lot of uh, time from the beginning of my work. Um, I re I, today, it's easy to me to tell that those subjects are really fascinating to me. But when I started, I was first in working in a very intuitive way. But today I realize that there are lots of connections between my projects and most of them, they are just kind of focused in those kind of uh, topics. So time is very important conceptually, but also physically, because um, as you will see, I'm using photography, video, who are medias that deal with time. 
they exactly uh, work with time. And, um, but I also use sculpture and different kind of material that are related with time in another way, with other approaches. Uh, memory and disappearance, I will also explain that later. I will come back to those terms. Uh, the visible and the invisible, the science and the spiritual, uh, life and death, the tragic and the marvelous, the real and fantasy, especially the boundaries between them, and the finite and the infinite. So I first uh, would like to show you some images of selected works. Uh, and this is here the first video installation that I did when I uh, ended Le Frenois in 2004. Uh, this is um, a dress, a white dress on the ground, where I decided from the top to project some video images. So in the images that appear on the dress are showing us some bodies of women that appear and disappear. So this is really kind of a magical appearance because this piece is exhibited in the, in the dark. But this is also a little bit uh, scaring, a little bit ambiguous because the, 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 the women that are appear, appearing they look like ghosts, so they really, they seem to be uh, like very uh, real. It's kind of illusion when you first uh, discover the installation. And here is a, a video extract with who that presents uh, this video installation. So when you, as a viewer, when you see the installation, the artwork, you, there's just a, a dress lying on the ground. And then, uh, because it's completely dark, you see those lights, uh, kind of blinking eyes, light sometimes. And sometimes the images of bodies appearing really slowly. So they are different speeds of appearance and disappearance. So to me, this work is was kind of um, uh, how to say in English. Um, it was an approach of life in a accelerate, accelerated way, like in really speeded way. Like if the time of life was uh, lasting only a few seconds. So when the body are appearing, when the women are appearing, they just appear one second or two or maximum 10 seconds. So, and they're doing, they're producing a, a very simple movement. So let's continue. Uh, at the same time, I did another video installations. Oh, it's going too fast. Uh, here, it's uh, the first work I did was uh, uh, photographs, uh, especially photographs from anonyms because I was used to collect a lot of photographs when I was traveling and I really, I don't know why, I was fascinated by, you know, these anonym photographs. And um, I was also really interested, interested at that time uh, about the question uh, related to identity especially because I discovered in my family uh, a very old album when I was about 22 years old. So for me, it was the first time I could see my ancestors. So, and I could see their face. And of, of course, I've never heard about them before. So I wanted to do a new work uh, by including those faces that were part of my family but that I never met before, that I didn't know anything about them. So I wanted to combine different faces coming from those photographs and mix them, to mix them together. And then I did this installation, which is composed of several screens uh, hanging and those faces looking like planets, a kind of constellation, a kind of a sort of sky in a way. 
Um, so those faces are the result of the superposition of many faces of my ancestors. So the, the result is the faces are not real, they are just mixed together. They are potential humans. Because I realized when I was superposing different faces together, layers by layers, you could create new faces, new identities, like in a kind of infinite way. So it was very interesting to play with uh, images in that way, in that approach. Uh, so all those faces are completely um, unreal at the end. Uh, this is a video installation as well that is uh, the same process than the, the work before, the dress on the ground. There are glass beads on the ground uh, spread out and a, projections, a projection, a video projection of um, thousands of light particles that are combining together from time to time uh, a body that represent physically a body. So it's a kind of uh, really biological approach of the body, uh, but also a more cosmological approach. Uh, this is another video I did with images, with archives, and some of them are also part of my family, some others uh, are from anonyms, from different countries, from Norway, from Russia, for, from Korea. Uh, I have a video excerpt, so I'm going to show you now. This video is also a kind of uh, the result of different experimentations on the computer, using video programs, uh, compositing programs, and I also uh, combine different kind of elements within the images, uh, playing with faces, playing with bodies, and um, in a kind of uh, reacting them. Um, so, as, uh, as I said, I started from photography, from the field of images, and little by little, I was interested in different sort of medias. Uh, for instance, light, because this is a, a work that I did when I was in a residency in Korea. Uh, and you will see also uh, some other works with neon, with this kind of uh, medium and also sculptures and um, other media. So I was in that work uh, really interested at that time because I was maybe 27 years old, what I was doing of my life because I was very young. I mean, being an artist was kind of uh, very difficult uh, to live with. I, did, I didn't want to do another job and I have plenty of ideas. So this work was kind of a translation to that feeling, you know, like an artist, you need to, you want to give some light to viewers, to the others, to the world. And uh, at the same time, you waiting for a response, an answer. So to me, art is really as a language. Uh, so I wanted to think about a work that would, by a simple word, uh, express that feeling, that really uh, intimate or personal feelings. And this, uh, the spider web, 
that is here uh, in front of the, the lights, the neon lights. It's actually a big spider web, uh, but also a fake one. And of course, there's no uh, spider around. So the, the spider web is kind of a projection in my mind of what was the art world in a way, or the links I wanted to create with the, the artwork. So this is just a, a point of view. There are different levels of lectures, but this is uh, yeah the first uh, neon light work I did. So here is a, a still image from a video installation that I also did in Korea with a dancer from Canada when I was uh, working in Montreal within uh, with a dance company. So I think there is also a video excerpt of that video installation. So this work is silent. Uh, basically the video is a loop, uh, about 10 minutes. It's projected on a screen made of uh, silk wires. The idea was that the viewer can walk through the, the screen and that we could really walk around and go through the images, like touch the images. So that that's why the uh, the support, the screen was important to me. And what appears in the video is very uh, kind of magical and shining particles and shapes moving. So I used the dancer, I did some captations from him at just the time when he was jumping and falling down. I was interested in the in-between moments, just between the the moment where he, where he was going up and then going down. So, and then I, I used the video programs to speed the video, to slow down the video, to extend time. And um, so at the end, the body appears just uh, a few seconds, just a single moment, like um, a flying stars. So at the same time, I was also approaching different kind of way of producing images, uh, and especially some programs to produce 3D images, virtual images. So this is one example, uh, one image is from a series of works uh, where I, I created a little human. It's a sort of child that you can see on the left of the image. And uh, he, of course, um, remember remind us uh, some different characters from stories, like the little prince, like Peter Pan, like different kind of uh, young characters from uh, our imaginary. And uh, in this series, this character was always alone and kind of exploring a planet that is close to the Earth, but not really similar, because this planet is completely dark. We can never see the, the sun and the sunshine. So it's kind of... Uh, losing himself, but also still continuing to explore this planet, try to, trying to know him, to know it better. So in this case, this is also a kind of uh, a little story that you as a viewer can imagine the end of what is going to happen. This is another neon project, which is a, a bird cage that I found in a market, in a second-hand market, and where I wanted to uh, to um, how to say in English to enclose uh, an element which is connected to the outer world, to the space, or to our uh, surrounding space. And I thought about the moon, of course, because the moon is a perfect screen for our uh, imaginary, our desires, our dreams, 
our childhood, different kind of stories. So um, I wanted to enclose this moon to explain or think or question different ideas uh, about the way human are trying to control, trying to catch different elements of our world, of reality. This is also an extract from a series of photographs where I did different pictures from individuals, some of them that I uh, didn't know, uh, like him. Now he's a friend of mine and he's kind of uh, really famous as a writer and journalist, but at that time I didn't know him at all. And uh, I also like the image before of the little kid in the dark, in the dark landscape. I wanted to picture some different people between the day and the night. So in a kind of in-between state. And at a moment where uh, we hesitate, we don't know exactly in which direction we go. So, but that can be also a completely uh, unreal images uh, that can be completely fiction, a fiction, a real fiction. Um, so, every character in that series are looking at the outside of the image. So, this is also to to make us thinking about or imagine the outside of the image, uh, what is beyond the edge of the images. This is an image also extract from a series called uh, Lost Time, where I superposed different uh, images from photographs collected in the past, but also some pictures of landscapes that I did when I was working in other countries. So this, those images from that series are the result of different layers. So it's kind of different layers of time that are meeting in those images. Of course, as a viewer, you cannot really uh, see which character is from a recent time and which character is from a very old time. But the idea is kind of a phantasm to me to be able to connect people from different time and different spaces, of course. So this is uh, one of the results. All those images are also quite ambiguous regarding the time they have been made because they are always between the dark and the light. I like uh, very much this, uh, this uh, level of, uh, of light and, you know, so, tell me there's a question. Yeah. Um, where does your interest with the night come? Because it seems like everything goes from moonlight or night. Or is it some personal thing? Or My interest between, so can you repeat? Well, your fascination with night for like this imaginary kind of thing. Yeah, well, I think I'm fascinated by that because, uh, well, there are different, actually, uh, aspects. As a kid, I think it was really uh, the moment, the only moment where I could feel alone and I could really do what I wanted to do. So it was a kind of space to me to just open my mind. But then uh, I think this is basically uh, because I'm also working a lot at night time, the evening. Uh, I think the state of the mind where we are in the dark, they're just not exactly the same than the day. Um, this is also the time where we can really uh, more easily dream and expand our senses. Uh, and ex especially because our attention, I mean our really physical and uh, how to say brain attention, it's much more accurate at night. But it's also, um, it's also, I mean, the, the time where ghost and you know all, all kind of uh, imaginary uh, stories and fiction are possible so this is why maybe I, I'm really interested in that yeah and also um, when I 
it's not always the case, but I did a lot of uh, installation and projects in the dark because I like very much how we react when we are in the dark. It's a kind of uh, when we don't when you don't see what is around you, when you can't see the exit, when you can't see exactly where the um, the photography or the video installation or anything is here, you have to be really careful. You have to slow down. You have to be really focused. So focused that it's easier for you to also forget where you are, to forget what time is it. Kind of lose yourself. So I think that darkness is also a m kind of sort of a media to help you to lose yourself and to be more focused uh, physically, but also in your attention on the work. So, so that's another installation that is, um, there was, maybe you've seen uh, an artwork from Robert Filiou. He's a French artist. He's kind of a historical artist because uh, he was really poor during its life. So he was working with very simple medium, uh, like using uh, some different materials from trashes, uh, what he could find really easily in Fortune. So one of the installation was made of those particles. Um, I've forgotten the name of those. Dice. Dice, thank you, yeah. So one of its installation was composed by dice, dices spread out on the ground. So I wanted to remind him in a way and also create a connection with my work. And um, so I wanted to put them in the air, like if I was just throwing them away and they were just, you know, freezed. Uh, and also this installation made of about uh, a thousand dice. Um, it's composing a, a sort of galaxy. So it's also a play between uh, the, the vision uh, we have from the space, the way uh, the astrophysician and our scientists can explain and trying to find the answers about the, um, the evolution in the space. And um, so it's a play between, you know, rational and irrational. And this is a video that is uh, also made using uh, computer and digital images. Uh, thanks to a special program, I could be able to create some landscapes, completely artificial. So I've been inspired by landscapes I photographed in different countries, especially mountains. And then in this video, I wanted to reproduce within the computer the, those landscapes and then to make them moving. So I have an excerpt here. The idea was to be able, as a viewer, to look at mountains that are growing up, that are moving. As we know, we can't see in the time of a human life, the rocks moving, the earth moving. So this is uh, also a way, this video, to be able to see what any human can see and to speed up time, of course. is about eight minutes and there are two layers to sound layers one is a combination of sounds directly coming from the ground so some very strong sounds 
just uh, giving us the feeling that uh, the earth is moving. So this is sound from volcanoes, from really strong phenomenon. And uh, the other layer is uh, an extract from Schubert, Schubert, the composer, which is really aerial, really slow music and really peaceful. So this is another video installation uh, which is um, composed of two veils hanging and a video projected on them. So it's also a kind of a magic appearance. I mean, a way to me that to use the video as a magic medium. Uh, so the space, the room is dark. And you can see uh, a window that show us a landscape behind. Yeah, so that was uh, the video captation of the installation. Um, so it was funny also because I did this video installation for an exhibition in 2010. And a year after, I was invited in the uh, Vuitton cultural space in Paris to include that piece in a show related to Peter Pan. So I didn't have that idea before, but of course, for the curators, it was also kind of a connection between the window of Wendy within the story of Peter Pan and that work. Uh, so, And this is a, a view of an exhibition in Brazil where you can see particles where that I showed you before and another installation uh, also shown before. This is another, I would say, play with word. Uh, another way to approach the neon light. Um, a lot of artists use neon light to, uh, to, to act like in a kind of competition with the neon light we used to see in the streets or you know, in the cities, which usually are just trying to catch our attention to some commercial center or just to engrave us some uh, messages to make us consuming or buying something. So in that case, I did this uh, neon installation. Um, it was on a street, so every people walking on a street could see that sign, which means you will never die. So this is exactly the opposite that the neon signs uh, usually means or are used for because it doesn't sell anything, it doesn't say anything except something that is completely uh, unmaterial, unreal and questioning something more uh, related to conscience, to, um, yeah, the, the idea of life, of death. This is a lie, actually, because when you read it, of course, we know we're going to die. But what is, what is interesting also, there's a part of that message that is true in a way, because we know, uh, depending on the point of view, we look at the life, we look at what we are, we can, in a way, believe that we are going to survive survive for, through others, through other people, through art, through literature, through images from television, etc. But also, uh, we can survive uh, just by the, I mean, physically, 
like our atoms we just move in another other way we we made of particles as well that won't disappear that just will be other you know stuff so this is also a lying message but there's a part of true and that's a detail from an installation made of ashes ashes from uh, books that i uh, read especially uh, when i was a student uh, from different writers that were important to me. They were critics, poets, philosophers. And all those edges from my books are combining, I combine together to draw the map of the world. So every continent are made of those ashes. So it's also a kind of um, approach of what is memory to me and also how I look at the word, how the word is represented in my mind. Because uh, all those books, as uh, every uh, book, every cultural support, uh, help us to know the word better, to, to have a vision of the word around us. So this is also um, a way to explain how the word is fragile. Uh, to me because everything I learn from books will also disappear with me so this is uh, also really um, I would say personal and intuitive works this is an ex a view of an exhibition that I did in Palais Tokyo in I think it was three years ago it was um, works produced thanks to a prize which is a sam art prize and i was able to travel to brazil to shoot some images from uh, gold mines uh, those gold mines were interesting to me because it was the first rush of gold in the history it was the really beginning of the 18th century so it was also at that time uh, the first time that uh, I would say European people use slaves to work with them. So it was a crucial period in our history. And those mines were completely uh, created. It's not the right word, but they were made by uh, slaves, by human hands. There were no tools, no technology at that time. So I wanted to do some images and video showing just how the, what they made and how the mine looked like. So, and I also did a sculpture related to that story. So you can see on the first, uh, an animal landing that were used to transport every material and also humans. So this is a video still. And also an installation made in connection in relation to that history. So this is another, this is a commission for uh, a night museum in Russia. And this is actually, it actually means uh, and it was from actually the, the mother of Bastian Ader, the artist that I told before, because she was a writer and she made a really beautiful book and famous uh, that she had written after the Second World War uh, and after its husband died because of the war. And one of the title of the book within the book was Is there any longer any miraculous in this world? Because of course she was full of despair at that time but she wanted to get some hope somewhere. So she wanted to communicate its hope at that time of this terrible past. So this sign, if it's also a kind of a remembrance. So maybe I can explain quickly because the image is not really good. Um, there's a curtain in the desert, <laughs> basically. Uh, this is partly real and partly digital. And I like uh, that idea when I saw that dessert because nobody was living there. 
it was a place for Indians in the past, but now there's only rocks and nothing else. Uh, really few tourists. And it's in the north of the US. So I wanted at that time just to uh, imagine myself using that place uh, as a stage, as a place for creating images. So, and it was also a landscape that were used in a movie, in a different movies in the past. So this empty landscapes was really perfect to project uh, images, to project uh, fantasies. So this curtain appears are tell us that something maybe happened or is going to happen in that landscape. So that's a um, light installation made in India. It was a commission during the art fair in, in New Delhi two years ago. I wanted to play with the invisible in that installation. So what I did, I was uh, collecting sounds uh, recorded by kind of engineers that are capturing the sound from the space. And I, I combined different layers of those sounds. So some are coming from the sun, some from planets, and some from beyond. So this, the result is really interesting because the sounds are really familiar, but also very strange. Uh, windy, but also metallic. And so I wanted to use that sound to produce a concert, but where there are no musicians. Because actually, I wanted the stars and the sky being the musician. So the lights are moving in relation to the sound. So you have to imagine uh, each colors and each rays of light being animated by the sound itself. This is another installation which is a remembrance uh, in a way because maybe you've seen recently uh, we heard in the news that a new couple was discovered uh, within the ground, a very old couple, more than 4,000 years ago and um, they were only, in my, uh, as, a, as far as I know, uh, just a really few uh, discovers like this. Uh, like people we could see as a couple uh, embracing themselves. Um, really like dying together. Um, so I, f I thought this image was really strong and I wanted to react. Uh, that passed by reproducing the position exactly as the bodies were discovered into the years. That's a real flower just on the ground and the video image of a flame burning the flower. So of course it's playing with something completely unreal because there's no fire, it doesn't burn at all, but at the same time the flower is real, so the pieces will disappear really quickly as far as the, the flower is uh, dying in a way. So that's another installation playing with particles, looking like water particles. And that's a cloud projected. It's a digital cloud. I mean, I did it with a computer as well, uh, just using only one photography of a cloud at the beginning. But then I produced a 30 minute video transforming the cloud. So it becomes really like a real cloud moving in a real time. So its shape is changing little by little. It looks like when you discover the video, as a still image, freezing, but in reality it's moving really slowly. So, and sometimes there are shapes appearing exactly when you're looking at the sky and they are, or you can imagine some different shapes. 
And there's another excerpt of a video. I think we've almost finished. There was a question about the, let me read it, the question. Regarding the curtain in the desert landscape, did you say that, uh, I, love the, I love the question. Oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, unfortunately not, but I would have loved to do that. Yeah, that's a great idea actually. Well, I think it would be easy to imagine some images from the cinema, from really you know popular images, but that could be also really interesting to just project uh, any kind of images, you know. Uh, yeah, mm. <laughs> or maybe shadows, like a uh, puppet shadows, or yeah, I have to think about it. <laughs> So this video until the sun is a uh, work made inspired by the first uh, monotheic god in history. So this video is lasting in uh, about eight minutes. There are two parts. The first part is showing us uh, when the sun is rising, so the appearance of the sun at the horizon. And at the same time, you can see some plants growing. So the nature is appearing at the same time of the sun. And the second part of the video, the sun is disappearing, the light is falling, and the nature goes back to the earth. So the life is disappearing. So the whole video is uh, about the sun and the, its relation to life in general. It's a little piece, a little, I, I would say, installation. It's made simply with a candle and a mirror. So there's just a written word on the mirror, and the light of the candle is reflecting the word itself. So you can see the word life, or to live, appearing, of course, in the way the light of the candle is moving. So the word is a little bit shaking, really fragile. So those are sculptures made from uh, real candles collected in Thailand in different temples. You know that they, in every temples, as well as in uh, traditional churches, we use a lot the light of the candles, uh, which deal with time especially. And I wanted to freeze them, so I did some molds and reproduced them into bronze. And then I used uh, a technique to light them again and looking like real candles. So you can actually use them, but they never melt. It's like eternal candles. That's also um, a work, a, a sculpture that is more than a meter by a meter, where the wind is freezed because I used real veil. I used the wind from uh, the outside and I applied some resin in the veils. And little by little, the resin was really uh, becoming strong. So the, the wind was uh, stopped. I mean, the movement was stopped and then I did that piece. So the wind disappeared, but the shape made by the wind is still here. So that's a, a commission as well, using cloud as images. That's a sculpture as well, did in Thailand, with um, people that were used to create little humans in uh, clay especially representing Buddhas. So I wanted to work with them to produce other kind of uh, 
works. And that's the, the first uh, sculpture of a series um, that is called Still Life. Um, as you maybe uh, see now, I'm really fascinated by time. It's kind of obsession. And in that uh, series, I started to use little by little and to develop a technique to be able to reproduce ice, to reproduce the snow. So I now I'm using and working with different kind of subjects. Here are flowers, like really traditional flowers. I did many kind of flowers. And here is a clock, a book. So that's a big mirror that was a commission for uh, Disney that organized an exhibition with contemporary artists. That's a sculpture that is uh, made of two uh, pieces. One is a, a copy of me. Uh, in real size, and a canva. Actually, this work was um, inspired by the image of the canva I discovered on a second-hand market, uh, in a flea market. And I liked really much the scene, which was a snow scene, a snow forest. So I liked the idea that the image from the painting was contaminating the real, like if this forest was just jumping into reality and freeze everybody looking at it. So I did many, um, many objects. This is an example here, many kind of animals, many kind of plants. I like very much to work with this with this process because um, it's actually connecting with different uh, topics I was interested in. Uh, connection with nature, of course, which with the environment. Uh, it's also a connection to our actual debates around the climate, the evolution of the climate. It's uh, also related to the, the fact that the ice and the cold is actually really help to preserve from time different uh, living uh, objects, like um, the plants, people, some, I don't know the word, but yeah, th the, the ice can keep for all time a lot of uh, um, things. So, yeah, I think this is the end. It's a recent photo series. I have a question actually. Do you mm -hmm. reveal the process? Do you reveal the process to someone? If I'm asking you how do you do this, do you reveal it or is it just something? It depends. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, this, for instance, this series or the eyes? No, I just remind, I mean, I'm thinking about the series you showed Paris Photo last year, so. Yeah, okay. Well. Usually I don't like to explain everything because it's kind of kill, you know. <laughs> but sometimes it's, in it's interesting anyway. Um, like this, this is really simple. You cannot really see actually here because uh, those images, you need to move to really uh, feel uh, and see how they have been made. Because actually those images, they are made of several uh, images printed on transparent films so when you turn around when you're moving it's lo it looks like they are moving 
and it looks like they are floating and slowly disappearing at the same time. So, yeah. It's sort of cinematic images. You can see here a little bit the other layers behind. Well, that's a public commission did recently. And that's the last uh, photo installation that I did, because as I said before at the beginning, I was using a lot of uh, old photographs coming from different parts of the world. And I had a lot of them in my studio, so I decided to just throw them away. But I didn't want just to throw them away. So I wanted to do maybe something new with it. Uh, maybe create something new, uh, something physical. So I decided to erase them rather than throw them. So I used a chemical, uh, different kind of chemicals, that I was actually experimenting when I was young, when I was a student in photography. And those chemicals erase partially or completely the images. So when you just um, zoom on the pictures, some of them are completely white. They became like they was at the beginning, just empty papers uh, ready to welcome images or some of them they just uh, show little part of the original images but most of them are completely faded so it's a kind of um, discomposition on the wall which is uh, four by five meters it's also a kind of picture of the memory working because uh, the images are composing a sort of wave. Uh, you can see a little here. So a wave moving. And some details disappeared, but some persist. So this is actually how memory is working. We are, the brain needs to erase some data, and we need to keep some others. So memory is combination of uh, forgetting and remembering. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Well, si since we are at art and design school, I would like to know if you have any significant experience, learning experience from your uh, career or being at an art school. Is there any experience that, I don't know, that you can share with us? Uh, well, yeah, actually there, there, there would be maybe plenty of things. Well, the, the main thing is that, uh, of course, when you finish a school, you really don't know what to do, you don't know how to start. So that was my big uh, issue when I uh, just ended my studies. So, um, but I thought the most important was not especially to exhibit myself or to um, actually be present uh, in openings or communicate. The most important thing to me was to work as much as possible. So uh, I just, um, yeah, I just decided to find uh, art centers or uh, different kind of cultural places. I applied a lot, uh, really independently. And uh, I proposed some projects, sometimes with some financial support and sometimes not. And also because um, when I uh, finished my studies, I didn't have any money and any job. So uh, I also wanted to travel. So that's why I applied to a lot of uh, cultural centers in France and abroad. So, and then I decided to work as much as possible. And then little by little, I started to exhibit my work, so, yeah. But, mm, I don't know, this is one example. <laughs> I mean, one, one approach of my philosophy is just working. But if you think about some other artists, like Basquiat, he really wanted, when he was uh, 16 years old, he wanted to be famous, he wanted to be an artist. So, for instance, Basquiat is much more famous for what he was because it was really special at that time. And, uh, but some other artists are more discreet, maybe like me, and prefer to work <laughs> a lot and waiting that 
people that are just you know interested in the work and wanted to exhibit my work so yeah okay um well i would like to ask you you know outside of the domains and media that you use um uh you know you have video you have photography you have installation you have sculpture um but outside of the the work that you publish and that you make public and that you exhibit what else do you practice within art because uh you know bill viola for example does video and photography but a lot of artists do drawing and painting or they do um, design work or they do you know strange other practices in media that they don't show to the public because they don't feel like it's part of their their work mm -hmm. and i feel like sometimes there are pieces that show evidence of drawing or that show evidence of other practices and i just just was curious to like ask well, that yeah actually there are some yeah i draw but uh i draw a lot to produce the images especially before creating you know the uh, digital images in a computer uh, I'm most of the time I'm working alone, but not every time. So this is really important to get some drawings to do some. But I don't consider myself as a drawer. I wouldn't like to show my drawings, so I just uh, use them into the process. Uh, but also recently, uh, because I worked a lot, you know, um, this is just an example. But I did a uh, different sort of videos. I use a lot of the computer. I love it. But I appreciate, because maybe I'm getting a little older, I appreciate the time I spend within my studio, within my atelier. So um, I start to develop some paintings now. So experimenting different, uh, yeah, different ways of painting, different formats. And, uh, and maybe at the end of the year, I will start to show a few painting, paintings, yeah. But uh, I don't know. This is still, you know, I'm going. Yeah. Uh, well, somebody's asking if it's fair to say that you explore between uh, the moment between life and death, mobility and stability, and stillness. Yeah, actually, because uh, what if, if there is a, if you really want to draw a line to connect uh, different works I did before. Actually, this line is really fragile, and maybe uh, what is uh, a connection between every, uh, between all of my works, this is fragility, fragility, yeah. Um, I don't know, I feel that I have the feeling since, but because of so, because of my family, my contacts, and my history, I really have uh, the feeling that life is a kind of uh, gift, it's really ephemeral, I'm so fascinated by the um, our environment, the history of life, the history of the earth, uh, until the origin of you know the, the cosmos, the origin of the universe. So I really feel that the time of a human life is so short, um, but at the same time, it's a long time. It's a uh, some of us will live a hundred year years, so this is a lot. You can do a lot of things. Um, so regarding the the viewpoint, uh, you can see our life is really like uh, one second, like a stupid uh, thing. But this is also, we can see our life, our time, like uh, a fantastic... Uh, potential to produce million things. So this is why my work also is maybe approaching uh, this uh, feeling around the time, something that is really fragile, ephemeral, but also that can be, I don't know, that can last, that can, uh, I don't know quite how to formulate this as a question but as you were showing the work I mean those were these the ideas were kept coming up of course about ephemerality and timelessness and um, but I kept and and I kept thinking how quiet the work is um, but what strikes me as well it, maybe because of the last question is uh, Yes, it, to me it seems to be that there's an edge of there's an issue or a question about death in it, but it never feels um, 
more like it's morning. It doesn't mm. feel like a morning. It feels like almost like an acceptance of the this uh, this movement. Um, and I, I guess one of the questions that occurred to me, I mean, I kept th also thinking of two other artists, um, Bill Viola and um, Boltanski's work, um, and looking at your work, two artists who are much older than you, um, but who, and whose work does have more of that mourning quality in it at times. And I'm just wondering if you have seen uh, a transition in your work as you've as you've grown as an artist, as you've grown as a human being and changed over time, wh whether you can sort of project yourself into the future um, a little bit about you know how you're dealing with this this very timeless theme as well. So. Mm. Well, <laughs> yeah, that. Thank you very much for your words. Um, yeah, that's true. I see lots of connection, you know, with those artists and. Um, what I remember that a critic said uh, about my work, um, I don't exactly remember, but it was a way to me, she was thinking that um, I was uh, trying to help uh, to, 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 to get the conscious of uh, living by uh, how do you say? Um, by showing us, you know, uh, the, 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 the death and experience of death, but in a very positive way. And I, I said to her, uh, it, for my, in my case, uh, I'm really not afraid at all of uh, dying. I'm not afraid of the death. So this is maybe... I don't know exactly why, I don't know the answer, I don't know how I'm going to evolve, how the my works are going to change in the future, but I know this is, uh, I still don't have, I still don't get it completely. Um, because I can say that I'm not afraid of death, but at the same time I'm really fascinated by this idea of appearing, disappearing, of you know the morning, the evening, the, the in-between state. Uh, maybe I'm trying to explain what is life by uh, playing with this in a way. I don't know exactly, yeah. But of course I don't want to... Um, when I present my work, I don't talk especially about this because this is... None of my work is really talking about death. This is talking about... Uh, this is more... Yeah, talking about life uh, at the very beginning or the almost the end. This is not. This is never completely the end. Yeah. Mm. And also because I'm not maybe, I was really religious when I was young, and uh, so this is as Bi Bill Viola actually. You know, he has a strong uh, history. Uh, connected to the its mother, its father, and um, connected to the the church. So its work is also uh, influenced by uh, the religion, the Catholicism. In my case, I was really religious until 15 years old, but then suddenly I just uh, changed my mind. And uh, because of the experiences and many, many things. But there is still something, you know, I don't believe at all. I'm not religious at all. Uh, I really, personally, I think there's nothing after death. And this is not a big deal to me. You know, I really accepted the fact that I'm maybe I'm just here. I'm just alone in the universe as we are all alone. And that's okay. You know, maybe this is much more what I'd like to say. Maybe, uh, okay, life is, uh, it's, uh, it's complicated, it's uh, really short, it's really lots of uh, pain, it's lots of, of joy, but that's okay. At the end, this is okay. 
even if we die, this is okay. Or, you know, this is, uh, yeah. It's, well, sorry for my English. This is really hard. <laughs> Um, so I would like to ask you um, a question sort of um, similar uh, to before, but I don't want to ask you about uh, predicting yourself into your future, but more about your past as an artist. Um, and I'm, I'm very young as an artist and a designer, and I, even I, in the first couple of years of what I'm doing, can feel changes you know, from year to year. Um, and I wonder for someone who's worked as long as you have, um, how have your attitudes toward your own artwork changed? And um, do you feel any changes in how you think about your work when you see it or when you make it? And uh, do you feel any change in what your art fundamentally is um, as you've progressed through your art making? Mm. Well, I would say, to be very short, I'm trying to make uh, the thing simple. When I started, I really wanted, in a way, without uh, really affir affirm it, I really I want I wanted to impress a little bit. You know, I wanted to really um, uh, control uh, what I was doing, control the images, uh, doing really impressive images, stories, or impressive installation or thinking about large-scale installation. But now, more the time, yeah, I'm trying to be, yeah, the more sim yeah, most simple than before. So, if I look at the, the recent work, I'm trying to, yeah, when I get an idea, I try to go to the most simplest, simplest way. To, to to realize it mm. yeah play any role in any of your work does fear play any role in your work this fear 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 i think in the beginning all the elements that you were showing uh, that yeah. you're interested in, the one that i didn't notice was fear and i was wondering if like how it's incorporated to you mm, fear in the beginning fear. Wasn't that in the beginning? Maybe I, I wasn't. I don't remember. Well, does it anyway? Because <laughs> <laughs> everything yeah. seems very like accepting of what is, but I, don't know, I was wondering, usually artists fear. The artists fear. Well, um. <laughs> Maybe that's a weird question, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, well, maybe, of course, I I think if uh, I don't know any really happy artist, I mean if <laughs> no, but if you're yeah, exactly. really happy or maybe close, no, I think if <laughs> no, I think if you're really happy, you don't need to, you know, to express or to question it. I mean, you start to get a question when you're not sure if it's really is it really happiness? Is it really what I think? Is it really real? Um, I don't know. Is it really me? Is it really you? When, yeah, art is um, is appearing uh, when a question is coming to me. So um, I'm using the art field as a language and different media as language to crystallize those questions. Uh, so maybe sometimes, of course, uh, the artists are closer to some questions, uh, some fears, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know, yeah. I mean, when I'm really happy, I don't need to talk. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Okay, well, uh, thank you for coming. And I just want to remind our students that Laurent Pernod is here for workshop week. So make sure you can register so you can take his workshop class. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.